coming up on Ag Week TV. We'll take you to the fifth annual Precision Ag Summit in Jamestown, North Dakota. Bean growers get tips and tools for improving their crops for the upcoming season. And South Dakota researchers are working to decrease losses to winter kill in winter wheat. and welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Shauna Olson. We are here at the fifth annual Precision Ag Summit in Jamestown, North Dakota, put on by the North Dakota Farmers Union. Joining me now to talk about this Precision Ag Conference is the president of the North Dakota Farmers Union, Mark Watney. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. This is a good program that you have. It's the fifth annual. What are farmers coming here and looking for? Well, there's an amazing amount of tools coming at us as farmers. And, uh, I mean, if you think of video games, all that information that came out and all that's changed, that's starting to happen in the agriculture business. We have the GPS, we have tools to measure how much we're planting per seeds and everything possible out there that you can measure. They're coming now to try to figure out, okay, what is the best avenue for me to use this? If I gather this properly, can I make it into a tool that can be much more efficient for my operation? What makes this event so successful? Well, it's that desire of farmers to learn. Uh, in the past, of course, the uh, last few years, prior to this one, they had a fair amount of dollars that they were making and they were able to uh, upgrade their technology. Now they're needing it to try to make themselves more efficient so they can be more profitable understanding that we have lower commodity prices. All right. What are some of the biggest questions you're finding farmers have right now? I think it really is centered around what do I do with all this information? And uh, they all gather it and then they try to figure out, okay, what do I use it for? How does it help me? And so forth. So they're trying to figure out that question, what am I going to use this for and what is the benefit going to be? Okay. And Mark, what else do you guys have coming up for us with the North Dakota Farmers you know, Union? We, we have a lot of things, but probably our two key things is that we're going to do a a capitalization plan or a way to find tools to help you put together your farming operation and your dollars needed for operating loans this spring. We'll have the FMHA and BND and any other programs we can bring to you to help you with that. All right. Yeah. Very good. Thanks for joining us. Mark Watney with the North Dakota Farmers Union at the Precision Ag Summit in Jamestown, North Dakota. We're going to kick it now over to Tracy Frank, who also met with one of the speakers today at the Precision Ag Summit and has more. Tracy. Shauna Howard Dahl of Amity Technology says Precision Agriculture will allow farmers to do things they've never done before. Because of Precision Ag, Dahl says strides are being made in water utilization where water is rare. It's also helping farmers use less fertilizer, saving money and the environment when they use it in the right amount at the right time in the right place. If somebody is seeding too deep or too shallow or if they're not having the right amount of product go on, there will be alarms that will allow farmers to know that they're doing things improperly. And so we, we're going to see a lot more technology in production agriculture. Shrikala Bajwa of NDSU's Agricultural and Biosystems Engineering Department says Precision Ag can help address food insecurity issues by increasing food production and conserving and protecting resources. It can also help farmers adapt to climate changes and it can help provide diverse and nutritious food choices. 9.6 billion people by 2050, that is what is estimated. That means we have another 2.3 billion more mouths to feed. But it also um, brings opportunities for states like us. We are a major agricultural state. It's an opportunity to produce more food, and it is an opportunity to improve the efficiency of production. Farmers say it's important to attend events like this so they can stay up on current technology and learn about ways it can impact their operations. I didn't start farming yesterday, and that's partly why I'm here, because of the technology uh, it, it's, a, it's a moving target and uh, I just felt if I didn't try to keep up I'd uh, be further behind than I probably already am. The Precision Egg Summit drew about 250 people. Shauna? A keynote speaker at the Precision Ag Conference is Brian Watkins. He's a sixth generation grain and swine farmer from Ohio. He's been applying precision ag processes to his operations since the mid 1990s. He has a lot of expertise with yield mapping, variable rate fertilizer and seed applications along with much more. He says he's a numbers cruncher and talked about saving money in tough times. The answer is that at times it is just spending less, but it also may be that we just need to be a lot better in evaluating cost-saving investments 
our investment budgets are smaller, but they're not zero, and we just need to make sure that they pay back and that there is a real and immediate return. We don't have the money to kind of play with now. We've got to make sure it pays. But some of these technologies, some of these data uh, services can pay, and so they may be something we have to do. Watkins created CropZilla, which is software for farm resource planning and operations. Ahead on Ag Week TV, what's next for bean growers this year? The latest on pests and prices. How did we become the region's largest independent seed company? By taking a very simple but powerful stand. We will sell no seed that we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm. Peterson Farm Seed. Stand tall. Drainage Solutions is experienced in the tri-state area. Their skilled employees will design, implement, and maintain the best drainage system available. Drainage Solutions uses state-of-the-art equipment along with the best data resources available to design a drainage system that they guarantee will be both efficient and cost-effective. Whether you're considering drain tile for the first time or adding to your existing drainage system, let Drainage Solutions design the most appropriate site-specific drainage for your needs. Total Ag Industries is the leader in total control. Their custom-built fertilizer systems are the crown jewel of the Total Ag lineup. Total Ag systems come with a fully customizable fill system, and the variable rate hydraulic drive system works with John Deere displays for real-time feedback and complete fertilizer monitoring. Total Ag's field-tested design allows precise control and accurate application in your fields for better yields and more profit. Contact Total Ag by phone or visit TotalAg.com. You kids stay in the car. I'll be right there. Honey, I'm going to need my Carhartts. When you pull on a set of Carhartt Extremes from Home of Economy, it's like wrapping yourself in a suit of armor, which can come in handy because sometimes being a parent feels more like being a superhero and battling the elements is just another part of the job. Find your Carhartt Extremes at the guaranteed lowest price, only at Home of Economy, where your dollar buys more. Who do you call when you have grain dryer issues? His number is probably already on your phone. Guy Kittleson of American Farm Equipment, 701-793-8804. With over 35 years experience in grain dryer sales, Guy was grain dryers before grain dryers were cool. He sells and services American, Chief, and Deluxe grain dryers with capacities from 200 to 10,000 bushels per hour. Guy works on them all. But when it comes to confidence and dependability in your grain dryer, buy from Guy. Guy Kittleson, American Farm Equipment. Bean growers learn the latest tips and trends for growing better beans at the annual North Harvest Bean Day. Ag Week's Mikkel Pates was there and reports on some of the challenges growers are facing this year. North Harvest Bean Day is the day that growers get a good look at 2016 and the issues they'll face in the market and in technology. Bean breeding, pests, and acreage competition are the top things on their mind. Our markets are saturated today with we grow 14 class in the United States, every one of them are in a carryover position. We don't dare grow any more than we did the years past. We basically want everybody to understand that stability is the, is the game right now. They just got to keep their foot in the door and not overdo it this coming year. We saw a lot of bacteria blight. I think almost every field in the state had bacteria blight. The next thing is white mold. So we actually saw a little less white mold than a lot of people expected. The last is rust, and we saw a lot more rust. 60 to 70 percent of the fields had some level of rust. So I think, I think if it's warm and dry, and growers maybe don't spray as much for white mold, I think we, rust is something that we could see a lot more of. We had a good year in 2015. I mean, there's disease pressure every year. You can't get away from that. But in general, we didn't have a lot of train wrecks. Since 2009, a team led by NDSU bean breeder Juan El Sorno has been developing a slow-darkening pinto bean for the region. If there are no unexpected snags, commercial growers may have access to it as early as 2017. North Dakota beans always have kind of a bad reputation of being too dark when you compare them to uh, a bean from Nebraska or Idaho or Washington. And that caused sometimes uh, price penalties when they're trying to market the beans. 
With this new trade, we hope that that's not going to be the case again. After all these years of uh, effort, we have something that looks promising. Profit potential for all crops is going to be difficult in 2016. Edible bean growers are hoping that too many growers won't go into edible beans to make their crop uh, less profitable. For Ag Week TV, this is Mikkel Pates. We'll have more on beans, specifically the bright future for lentils, in next week's show. The South Dakota Corn Growers Association marked its 30th annual meeting this month. Top issues they face include ethanol and environmental regulations, but the most pressing challenge may be prices and marketing. One of the speakers, commodity broker Brian Split, had some advice to navigate the upcoming marketing season. He says one of the most important things for growers to do is to manage the carry. Additional bin space may be making producers hold on to grain rather than sell it, but he warns that just because you have the bin space doesn't mean you have to use it. If we see a market similar to 2012 where, for example, the price of December corn was at an inverse, so that means it's above the price for the following July, the market's telling you it wants your grain right now. And you can, if you still want to reown that grain, you have the opportunity to sell it in the front month and still maintain ownership of it at a period down the road at a cheaper price. So just uh, things that you have to be mindful of, especially in the, in the uh, margin environment that we're in right now as margins have tightened over the last several years. Another concern is the EPA's controversial Waters of the U.S. rule. It's in legal limbo now, but speakers urged growers to be proactive in protecting themselves against overregulation. They can choose to do their voluntary programs. They can choose to keep good records. They can choose to let their legislators know what they're doing and basically toot their own horn. Uh, all of these practices they do on their own without any help from any legislatures or county or state money is a feather in their cap. The growers also discuss their drive to get E30 fuel on the market. The South Dakota State University wheat breeding program is working to come up with a hardier variety of winter wheat. Each year, about one and a half million acres of winter wheat are planted in South Dakota, but 25 to 35 percent of that is lost to winter kill. That's a loss of 80 to 100 million dollars a year. Now researchers are trying to cut those losses and increase profitability. So wheat first has to flower, or first has to survive in order to produce a yield. So actually winter hardiness becomes first goal uh, in, in, uh, prior, to the, prior to yield enhancement because if, if it, it would survive only then it would yield. So that becomes our major goal. It takes about 10 years to develop a new wheat breed. The SDSU researchers are also ready to release two new spring wheat varieties which will be available to growers in a year. The research is paid for with grants, state and federal money, and growers' wheat checkoff dollars. Your agri-weather outlook for the week is up next on Ag Week TV. And later, some people wonder what farmers do all winter. We'll talk to a young couple who's finding out just how busy it is. It's three windows in one. It's the Euro Series by Minn Kota Windows. It's a picture window. One turn of the handle and the unit tilts in for ventilation. A second turn swings the sash inward. Easy to clean from the interior and available as a window and patio door. Durable hardware allows for larger single units and tremendous safety. And of course, it's covered by the industry's best warranty. The Euro Series by Minn Kota Windows. Midwest built, Midwest tough, guaranteed for life. Minn Kota Windows, windows for your this is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alara Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Pronovo Snowblowers, just what you need. Lots of standard features and 33 models available and the colors you want. The high level of manufacturing and performance standards assures you of owning the superior, most advanced equipment. Snowway is the leader in designing snowplows with a big appetite for snow. Whether you're seeking a snowplow for your truck, skid steer, or UIV, Snowway has a highly engineered snowplow to fit your needs with a variety of options. For Pronovo Snowblowers or Snowway Snowplows, contact your nearest dealer or North Country Marketing. As a manufacturer, if you don't actually farm, 
There's so many places where you go wrong if you really don't have a true gut feeling for the end result. From the seed placement, fertilizer placement, packing, weigh scales, variable rates, everything that we have is put there to make you more money. At the end of the day, we guarantee that with Super Seed Guarantee. Tightline Drainage is the Red River Valley's most trusted name for tile. Tightline uses the Port Hydromax plow and also Port Hydromax trenchers for installing our laterals and mainline accurately. The science behind drain tile proves healthier plant growth and greater yields. Tightline Drainage also sells pipes, fittings, tiling plows, land all tillage equipment, and more. Tightline Drainage is owned and operated by experienced agricultural professionals who understand the need for progressive agricultural practices. Call Tightline Drainage for a free drainage design today at 701-235-1900. Weather portion of Ag Week this week will start off with the overall outlook. Arctic air is in retreat across North America. We've had it descend the last couple of weeks down into the northern plains. Much of the Midwest has had some pretty cold weather. Not really crazy cold for January, but a definite cold snap. Well, now that stuff is going back toward Hudson Bay and the far north. Secondly, the rains and mountain snows continue for the Pacific Northwest and northern half of California. Still not looking for much in the southern part of California, which does have some significance for the overall national drought outlook. Meanwhile, I do see at least another pretty good chance, not necessarily this week, but next week, of another snow system, perhaps a big one, in the Midwest to accompany the one that's ongoing this weekend along the eastern seaboard. But before we get to all of that, the last few days, the last little little bubble of cold high pressure working through the Great Lakes, bringing behind that some strong south winds, which ushered in a pretty nice warm front, setting the stage for a nice weekend warm up and lots of thawing weather across the northern plains. And it does look like this milder temperature regime will hang around for a while. I don't see a lot of super above average weather, but we're settling into a lot of average January temperatures with some above average temps over the next few days. As I mentioned, Arctic air has gone in retreat. It's hanging up around Hudson Bay right now. The polar jet stream weakening quite a bit. The southern branch of the jet stream remains very much the strong one. And that's so typical, very classic El Nino weather pattern. As we move through the week, the northern branch will flip flop around, bringing us the occasional milder day. It retreats to the colder day in the northern plains, upper Midwest. Any storm action this week is going to be along this southern jet from Florida along the eastern seaboard. I just don't see a lot of heavy weather in the Great Plains with this one. Toward the end of the week, though, another strong jet stream energy streak will be approaching the west coast. Should bring some more significant moisture to parts of the Pacific Northwest down through northern California. And that eventually may turn into a Midwest snowstorm sometime the following week. Let's take a look at the actual forecast then. First of all, there will be plenty of moisture out in the northwest, down through about San Francisco, but not much further south. Much of the southern plains, including Texas, will be dry. And in classic El Nino pattern, we've got a big rainstorm in the southeast and, of course, all that snowfall in Washington the last few days. This coming week, I don't see a lot of moisture, at least nothing out of the ordinary across the northern plains. Next week, that could be different, though. I do think the Pacific Northwest will stay rainy. Still not much for the L.A. Basin. The southeast will again be rainy and I think there's a pretty good chance for a rain and snow system through the Midwest, probably centered on Iowa sometime around that first week of the February. Northern Plains probably missing most of the action. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine. Reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable, trusted, Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Commitment. You need it to succeed on the farm. It's total dedication to the land, family, and community. It's more than a way to make a living. It's a way of life. You've had it since the first time you ran your hands through the soil, held bale hay, or rode along in the combine. Your commitment. It's as strong as your family's trust. As honest as each long day you put in, and as pure as the opportunity that comes with every tomorrow. It's how we build our bins. With proven design, 
superior structural integrity, a lifetime warranty, and a promise to stand with you, no matter what storms come your way. The harvest will always be protected, so you can sell when it's right for you, your family, and your farm. Commitment. It's why we can say, there's nothing standard about Superior. It's time to demand more. With microessentials, you get more from every acre. Through our fusion technology, only microessentials combines four vital nutrients into one powerful granule, ensuring uniform nutrient distribution and increased nutrient uptake. The innovation behind our fusion technology means you'll grow stronger, healthier plants. Microessentials, get more from every acre. The North Dakota Department of Agriculture is committed to staying on top of policy and regulation changes and how they affect you. Regulations such as OSHA's and Hydrous Ammonia Policy and EPA's Waters of the U.S. and the Clean Air Act. We'll fight for common sense solutions and we need your help. Follow us at nd.gov slash ndda to see the latest policy and regulation changes and learn how to submit comments about the issues that affect you. Ag Week TV, presented by Peterson Farm Seed. Many farmers are using unmanned aerial systems to get a good view of their fields, but a Minnesota implement dealer has started offering a data collection service using a Cessna airplane. How implement of Wilmer started doing aerial imagery in 2014 using drones and other unmanned aerial systems. While the images are high resolution, Haug soon found UAVs weren't efficient enough for what they wanted to do on a large scale, so they turned to airplanes. As an individual farmer to take a drone out and to fly a single field here and a single field there, you know, it might work great, it might fit perfect for your operation, but for us as a provider of the imagery and a processor of the imagery, we needed something where we could actually go out and fly tens of maybe possibly hundreds of fields or acres or thousands of acres within an efficient time frame so we could actually give the farmer a good product within the time frame that he could use that product. Right now, the company operates in a 15-county area in south-central Minnesota, but it's working to expand. The NDSU Extension Service is looking for people who want to get involved in the organization. Regional directors are visiting farm shows and other events looking for people who want to make a difference. For several years, most ag graduates went into careers in the private sector rather than extension careers. Part of that's probably also due to um, extension as a whole didn't sell the value of an extension career to those graduates. So we're here today to help inform folks what a career in extension is like and uh, hopefully um, expose them to that opportunity. A starting salary with a bachelor's degree is around $40,000 a year plus benefits. Well this year Jonathan Knudsen has been following a young couple as they get started in farming. Non-farmers might think this time of year farmers get to sleep late or lounge on a sunny beach. But Dustin McGregor and his wife are learning what older farmers already know. Some seasons are just busier than others. You probably heard the jokes, farmers sitting around all winter. But Dustin McGregor, like other farmers, says he stays busy year round. It is the downtime, but you know, you still put in probably 40 to 50 hours a week. I always make a a newsletter to all my landlords that are from out of the area to let them know how things are going and how the year went and I always send one in the spring and one in the fall. And people really like it. One of my landlords, her son's out in Oregon and he really is interested to hear about it. When I married a farmer I knew he'd be busy in the summer and he is very very busy, much busier than I expected. <laughs> But then in the winter, I, th I had originally thought, oh, well, he should be home every once in a while and I should be able to make this list and he should do it while I'm at work. And that is not the case. They work Monday through Friday still, even though it's winter. That was something I had to adjust to. It's true. Farmers do have some free time in the winter, but they stay active all year. For Egg Week, I'm Jonathan Knudsen. The McGregors do say they have a little more time for hunting and fishing in the winter. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll take you along on a coyote hunt. A 
did we become the region's largest independent seed company? By taking a very simple but powerful stand. We will sell no seed that we wouldn't be happy to plant on our own farm. Peterson Farm Seed. Stand tall. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. Soybean producers, plan to attend the Northern Soybean Expo February 2nd at the Fargo Holiday Inn. Beginning at 7.30 a.m., enjoy a buffet breakfast with soybean researchers. Highlights of the day include a live taping of the U.S. Farm Report, moderated by John Phipps, Dr. Barry Asmus, Senior Economist with the National Center for Policy Analysis, and Dr. Bill Wilson, Professor in the Department of Agribusiness and Applied Economics at NDSU. That's the 2016 Northern Soybean Expo, February 2nd at the Fargo Holiday Inn. Every day across America, excess food is gathered by a network of good people at local food banks, giving hope to millions of children who struggle with hunger. They've earned their wings, and you can too. Together, we can solve child hunger. Support Feeding America and your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? AgWeek Magazine, reaching over 30,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. AgWeek provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. AgWeek. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. Hunters were on the prowl for coyotes as they competed to see who could bring in the most in a one-day hunt. The competition was put on by the Enderlin Sheldon Wildlife Club. Fourteen coyotes were taken down during the all-day event. Forty-two teams of two competed, the most teams they've ever had in the four years of the event. Lowering the coyote population is a big help to ranchers. You go out and find one that's lame and you go out and treat it the next day and it won't be in the flock. And... They just kind of pick away at them, and then they start getting braver. Then you just find ones that are just killed and not eaten. So they just keep getting braver, and then I don't know if they do it for fun or what they do. The first place team brought in seven coyotes, second place brought in three, and third place brought in two coyotes. Thanks for joining us for this edition. For all your ag news, go to agweek.com. We'll see you back here next week.